going on we have the BMW M10 engine sitting here ready to be finished and what we're gonna be doing is adjusting the valves doing the valve lash valve whatever you want to call it this is definitely a little bit different than normal vehicles um, at least when it comes to eccentrics the little thing that you're adjusting and I'll show you up that up close but uh, to do it, it's pretty basic tools. You have a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen up the nuts. I have extra long feeler gauges because they're nice because they can bend um, easier. But uh, you wanna, I usually go between the seven and the eight feeler gauge here um, because you wanna set a really tight eight, uh, nice smooth seven. So we have our two feeler gauges there. Uh, like I said, these long ones are nice because they can bend and you can stick them wherever you want. So I like using these compared to the shorter ones. And then all that's left is something to adjust the eccentrics. And I actually have made my own little tool. It's, I believe there's an old brake drum spring. As you can see here, I had cut off the tip. I cut off the tip, kind of just bent it just where I can stick it in the hole and adjust when needed. So I'll show you how this all works. And we're gonna start, I have the number one at top dead center on the compression stroke, which puts the number four at top dead center on the exhaust stroke, which you don't wanna do because it's still is slightly touching um, the rocker on the camshaft. So you wanna make sure they are completely loose, not touching at all. But when number one is at top dead center on the compression stroke, we've got the intake valve on number two we can do and the exhaust valve on number three that we can do. And then we'll rotate it um, 180. We'll get number four at top dead center, which will make the opposite of the intake of number three and the exhaust of number two should be therefore loose completely. Um, I've set number one and uh, moving on. So I'm going to be going and doing this number two intake valve. And I'll show you up close on how we're working that. All right. So I brought it up and close so you could see, but there's this little hole right here. There's like a little gunk on it. Oh, it actually has a chip. I did not catch that on inspecting it. It shouldn't hurt it. Um, I'm hoping it chipped before and it's not in the engine that I just built. But what I like to do, and it's kind of not preference, you do need to do it by the size. This is obviously a 0 0.008 millimeter. Um, oops, I just lost the seven. Okay, so I pulled these two out. You're doing it on the valve, not on the cam. You're not um, measuring the distance between there. We're doing it on the the valve itself. So I'll take my feeler gauge, kind of set it up to hold itself, and then I can get this one, slide in here. So I'll put the number, the 008 in there, grab my little tool, and you could use an Allen wrench. There's lots of different ways. Lots of different people have done different things. I kind of just found that this was the right size and I used it. So I like to tighten it down to where I can't pull this out. Um, kind of get a little more tension on my locking nut just so it doesn't move so easily. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with it nice and tight and then I'm just gonna push it forward till I can just move the eight and it's kind of sticks. Um, like I said, it's a little hard to get in and out. So then what I'll do is grab my seven 
And this one will just, should then just slide right in, which it does with barely any friction whatsoever. It just goes right in. So I'm gonna lock it down. While I do it, I like to hold, and this is why I kind of bent the way this is because I can push this and then hold it up against the valve cover seal area head. And then I'm just gonna tighten it. And I like to make sure it's nice and snug. There's new lock washers on here um, to make sure it doesn't come undone obviously except for that one that one does not look but um so now it's locked down there's gonna be just a little play obviously there but number two intake is done and we're gonna move on to number three exhaust and I think the book a lot of people I mean you're doing this probably every 15,000 miles don't quote me on adjusting the valves Oh, come on. And especially in this new build, I'm going to be running it and then probably at 500 miles, check the lash. Another thousand, check it. Just going to periodically check that until I know it's good. I think I can do this upside down. Get our number eight. Did I already lose the. We're gonna slide that in there. This is why I like the long ones because I can just work with it however I need to to get it in there and flat. And I get my tool again in that hole. We're gonna tighten it down until it doesn't wanna move. I actually pushed the valve down a little. So right there is touching, I'm gonna just tighten this down to somewhat hold it so it's harder to turn. And then we'll just bring it back until that is free. So you can see, maybe a little tighter. Okay, and then we'll get number the seven out. Just see now seven should just go right in. Maybe just a little looser, but I think that's gonna work just fine right there. And you could definitely tune it, fine tweak this until you get it just right, but I don't want to wait. All right, no one has time for that much. So I'm going to hold it, tighten that one down. It's interesting that one has less thread showing, but okay. So that's about it for adjusting. Like I said, these valves are very simple, a little different than other engines in the terms of you're rolling this other cam basically on the rockers themselves. Uh, but it's simple. You have these two tools. It's always good to check your ta uh, valve lash anytime you can, just because it helps um, keep everything running really well. And uh, that'll, that'll do it for timing. As you can see too, I have these, um, holders and they all need to be slightly adjusted too. So while I have my valve, uh, my feeler gauge is out, I'm going to double check what the clearance is between these and the, and the washer. And then um, I'll set that, cause this one's a little too loose. This one doesn't move at all. So I'm gonna get those on. I think it was a 16 thou gap, which let's just see if I got any of them close. Yeah, like that one, not too bad. That one's not too bad. That one does not have a gap. We'll do the ones that are obviously at top dead center because they are gonna move a little more. That one's not. So I'm gonna double check what 
that gap is and then we'll uh, adjust those um, as we do the other ones. Okay, so I'll just double check because these are island engineering lock cam or rocker locks, if you want to call them. Basically, they call in for 11 to 15 thou gap, which is kind of a bigger range. So we're going to go shoot for the middle and go 12, 13. Um, and if it's a little looser, that's fine. Just because of heat expansion is the whole reasoning and things don't want to be bound up. So I like the 13 thou, just that's right in the middle. I feel like this is safe safe bet um, and so we have uh, we're going to do the ones that are on top dead center or at least the loose ones just because that way uh, we know they're loose they're just sitting there this might be harder with the longer one now I'm just going to butt it up up against there and then we're going to tighten these down both sides make sure it's nice and snug really don't want these to loosen up okay and then there's still just a little play in there perfect do that to this other side This side, it's hard to do it. Two hands, one hand, I need two. Put on that side. Definitely say the shorter feel like age. It's a little easier with this doing this, but this will be fine. All right, and I'm just gonna tighten these down. And if you don't know why I'm using these, it's because originally you have springs that are pushing up against the rockers to keep them in their spots, but at high RPMs are known to walk off and then you just break a rocker and it's bad news bears, everything's broken. So I like this, this kind of idea because it's locking it down. I can periodically come in here and check them, make sure everything is golden. We have those ones set. I'm gonna get my little magic yellow marker so I don't forget which ones I've done. And I'll probably just go through and double check everything again, just in case. But we did this one, that one, and these two. And also, I've been marking everything except for my head bolts because these are going to get retorqued after they get hot. Then I'm going to go through and mark them. Um, I don't want to have extra lines or try to get those off because the plan is to get it all warm, retorque them, then mark where they're at, do witness marks. So in the future, if they loosen up, I can spot it easily and not have to decipher between two different marks. Now, that's about it. I'm gonna do the rest of them just real quick. There's no point in watching or, you know, it's gonna be repeating that process. So I have one, two, three, four left. Like I said, if I go ahead now that I have that done, should be able to, well, I'm not gonna be able to spin this by hand, maybe. Oh, nope. So we're gonna spin this over and do our other valves 
probably gonna just pull out the plugs, make it a little easier because spark plugs in. And we'll turn it, do the other ones. Then that's buttoned up, we're gonna sew that on, throw the, the exhaust, bolt that up, get the intake cleaned up, bolted on, get our distributor on, and uh, I think that's it. Okay.